Well, hello, everyone. Well, hello, everyone. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to another video. Uh, today, I wanted to do a quick update video, really, um, just a refresher on one that I did years and years and years back, all based around how to host your 360 virtual tours using FTP hosting. Uh, I've seen quite a few posts recently on different sort of groups and I get emailed quite a lot as well from people asking how to host their 360 tours. So they've created a tour using whatever software they're using, um, but they're not sure how to get it online so everyone can view it. Now, as many of you know, I've used 3D Vista myself for my 360 virtual tour software for many years. So the process may differ depending on the software that you're using, but if you are able to export your 360 virtual tour files to be hosted on a server, then you should be good to go. So uh, the hosting company that I've used since day one uh, is called 20i. Uh, they've been absolutely unbelievable. They're really, really good. The customer service is phenomenal. The speed is excellent. Um, so I'm going to be focusing on using hosting with them. But of course, there are other hosting companies available. Uh, I can just go by my own experience. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run through starting from the beginning. So basically exporting your 360 virtual tour from your chosen software. Of course, I'm going to be using 3D Vista for that. Um, and if any of you haven't seen my video on 3D Vista, which I'm sure pl plenty of you have, because it's one of the most viewed videos that I've got, then I will uh, I will link that up in the up in the corner for you so you can take a look. So we'll go through how to export the virtual tour and then what to do with those files um, afterwards with regards to FTP setup and things like that. So uh, without further ado, let's hop onto the computer. We'll have a look at some screen recordings and you can watch me ramble on. <laughs> so let's get cracking. Okay, so I thought we'd start off in 3D Vista. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, most of you or some of you probably aren't using 3D Vista. If you're not, why not? Um, it'll just give me an opportunity to show you what the process is, especially for the people that are using 3D Vista, so we can kind of kill two birds with one stone in this video. So um, I've already created a tour and I've already sort of exported this tour. Um, and, you know, I've connected all of my um, panoramas and everything. So we've got this one going into this one. Um, and I've added videos onto the screen and all that sort of good stuff that you can do in here. Uh, also, I've been a bit sneaky and I put one in the reflection in the mirror here, which I thought was quite cool. Uh, anyway, um, so once your tour is all complete and you've done your skin and all that sort of stuff, um, what you need to do is come to the bottom right here. Um, obviously, check your project settings as well, just all the stuff down the side here. Make sure you've got your thumbnail in place. Um, as a default, 3D Vista uses the first shot in the project. So in this case, it's the aerial view drone shot. As a thumbnail, that would look awful. Um, so what I do is I override that and just use a normal still photo that, I, that I've taken of the property. So I normally do still photography and virtual tours at the same time. Um, and then obviously give the project a name. That would be the title of the tour. And then a quick description. And then all these other settings down here. Um, you can chop and choose. And like, for example, I choose to deactivate toggle full screen on double click because um, that can get a bit annoying. Um, so yeah, once all that's done, done, come to the bottom right and click on publish. Uh, and then what you want to do is you want to make sure that you have this ticked here, which is um, web mobile. Okay, so what this is basically going to do is it's going to spit out a load of files. Don't need to worry about what's in them, um, but it's basically like index files, all the library files, all the media files, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then you've got settings down the left here. I normally just leave all of these off um, because I don't use stereo video. Um, and the adaptive, uh, I mean, if you're using large videos in your tour, then it's worth clicking on this. Um, because it will basically adapt the size for the device that they're viewing it on. Um, but I, the videos that I put on the TV screens in my tours are really small anyway, um, so I don't bother with that. Um, and then you've got this bit here, uh, which is very important. Um, what this is basically, what this basically is, is 
the final URL of your virtual tour. So we'll go into uh, the we'll go into this a bit more detail when we get onto the hosting side of things. So basically, my hosting is set on my domain because with Twenty I, I also have them host my website as well as my virtual tours. And then that way I can keep the same domain name on my tours. Um, I just basically, what I've done um, in the public HTML, the main folder of my website, I've created a subfolder. Uh, I'll just come across here, a subfolder you can see here um, called client tours uh, within the main directory of my um, website hosting. So what that will do uh, is that enables me to do my, um, just move back again, my domain name, forward slash client tours forward slash and then what i'll do is create a folder in the destination um all has to be lowercase no spaces so this is uh the name of the of the uh, business and then hyphenated and the name of the um the, the property itself then forward slash index dot htm okay so that's basically going to be the full URL of the finished tour. Uh, yours will obviously be, be different, but you need to make sure that it is co uh, correct. And what this basically does is that when people share the tour on social media, which a lot of businesses will be doing, uh, it will pull through this thumbnail here and the description and the title. So instead of it just having a link with the name of the tour, which looks a bit ugly, um, it will have the, the thumbnail and the description as well. So 100% do that. Uh, so once we've checked this box, uh, all we do is come down to destination here and then click on that. Um, and then we choose a folder um, to publish our tours to. And let's say I'm just gonna create a new one just for, just for example purposes. So we do new folder. So we do um, your, hyphen tour, hyphen property, oh, hyphen name, if that makes sense. Okay, um, whoops, there we go. And then click create, all right. Um, I'm not gonna open that because I've already published this tour and I don't wanna mess up my, um, the, where this publishes to. Uh, but then you basically click open and then the name of that will come into here and then you click publish and it will create all of your files for you. Um, now, I'm not sure how this works with other software companies, um, but I'm pretty sure it would be similar. So depending on who you use, uh, if you are still very, very new to it, then um, either contact their support team or have a quick look on their FAQ section on their website. And I'm sure that they'd have it uh, all listed on there for you. Um, so what we're gonna have a look at now uh, is what to do with those files once you have exported them. Um, and we'll go through a bit about um, 20i as well. In fact, let's go through 20i first and then we'll take a look at what to do with the files. So here we go. Okay, so 20i. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, I've been using them for years and years and years, literally, a bit of tea, um, literally since day one. So uh, basically who they are is they are a obviously a hosting company. Uh, they do managed cloud hosting and they also do um, hosting for WordPress websites. And they also do what's called reseller hosting. And that's more for web designers. Um, so you can basically start your own hosting company within 20i and you can resell hosting under your own brand name. Um, but that really would probably wouldn't apply. Um, it may apply to some people watching this. Um, but, uh, but yeah, most people are gonna be using either the, um, the managed cloud hosting um, just here, or the managed WordPress hosting. Uh, now, the great thing with 20i um, is that they also do domains. So if you don't have a domain name yet for your website or your business, then you can get one through them as well and keep it all under one roof, as to say. And they have an absolutely incredible CDN or content delivery network. So you can see just down here um, where all of their global um, data centers are located. So they literally cover the entire world pretty much. Um, so anyone that's visiting your 360 tour uh, is going to be getting really, really good fast speeds. So that's all really, that's all we're looking for in a nutshell. You know, we're not that bothered, you know, when it comes to hosting virtual tours about the, you know, the, the 
really, really complex stuff, but I'm not. <laughs> so all I wanted to do is work and be easy and good value as well. Uh, so just to go through a few of the plans um, with 20i, they're both the managed cloud hosting and the uh, WordPress hosting are both the same price. Um, basically, the difference with the WordPress hosting is that it gives you um, options for settings for your WordPress website. OK, um, so it can optimize the website for you. Um, again, make sure it's loading really quickly. Uh, if I click onto the WordPress hosting, this is the one that I use personally. So their plans and prices. So you've got the micro, uh, which is £9.99 a month uh, with the 20i cloud hosting. You can use Amazon AWS for hosting as well if you want, but it is a bit more expensive. Um, speed wise, a lot of people use AWS. Um, I've never used them. I've, as I say, I've always used 20i. Uh, they are more than fast enough. I've never ever, I've got hundreds and hundreds of tools online with them and I've never had one complaint. So, um, so yeah, so their micro package is £9.99 a month. That gives you 25 gigabytes of storage and a terabyte of bandwidth, which is a lot. Um, then you, you, the good thing with this is it will scale with you. So I recommend just starting at the lowest one, uh, wait until you've used the space, and then you can upgrade for 19.99 a month. So you're gonna pay 10 pounds more, and that'll give you double the storage, all right? And then moving up from that, you've got medium, 80 gigabytes of storage, more bandwidth, more RAM, um, as you get a bit more RAM with the small one as well. Um, and then it just keeps going up and up and up and up and up and up. So we go right to the very end. Um, yeah, 1,920 gigabytes and 1 1.9 terabytes of storage, 40 terabytes and it's 1,600 pounds a month. Yes, very, very, very expensive, but I don't think any of us are going to be using that. I think for most virtual tour companies, you know, you're going to be somewhere around the large one at the max. Um, so yeah. You know the good thing with this is that it can it can grow with you so if you are interested in signing up with 20i i will leave a link in the description below for you to do so um if you use that link what it will do is it will give you 25 pounds credit on your account after i think it's about 45 days of you being with them um so yeah that will pay for if you're on this micro package that will pay for a couple of months for you um and then i get the same so you know everyone's a winner so um if you are interested in signing up with 20 i then please do use that link and then we will uh, both be winning so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to show you what to do with the files once we have exported them uh so let's crack on with that now Okay, so here we are in the 20i dashboard. Uh, what you can see is that basically we've just got an overview of our accounts, um, our uh, domains that we've got uh, with 20i. Um, you see how I've got my main website, and then I've also got another one for my 3D Vista training course, uh, which by the way, you do get free if you purchase 3D Vista from me. So if you have watched that 3D Vista video, um, then make sure you use the link down in the description of that, and you'll get the training free. Uh, so I hope you get up and running. Um, anyway. I digress. The great thing with 20i is that it's it's very, very straightforward. It's really easy to use. The layout is is excellent. Um, so you can see here from here, you can manage your hosting, you can manage your domain names. Uh, if you've got VPS, you can you can use that. To be honest, um, it's a private server. I've never even touched touched my eyes. And then you can manage your WordPress sites as well if you have the WordPress hosting with them. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're just going to click on my domain name here. Um, I'm going to have to blur out a few bits and pieces in here, um, but that's not going to affect what we're going through. So uh, basically what we want to look at, and this goes for any hosting company, not just 20i. So if you are using somebody else, as long as you have access to the FTP information, then you'll be golden. OK, so um, the next thing you need to think about is what FTP upload tool you're going to be using. Uh, for a long time, I used FileZilla, uh, which were brilliant. They were good, uh, but I've recently changed from PC to a Mac, uh, and there's an amazing um, program on uh, Mac called Forklift, uh, which is basically an alternative to Finder, uh, and you can actually plug in your FTP through there. I think you can do it through the Finder as well, um, but the good thing, as you'll see in a minute with Forklift, is that um, you can do uh, like a dual screen thing. So you can basically just drag one from the other. So 
and what you need to do. And again, I'm not going to be able to go through this because it will depend on which FTP upload tool you use. Uh, but if you just look in the information and find out um, how to connect your FTP account uh, or your FTP server, then what you'll see from there is it will ask you for the server name, the username and the password. Sometimes it'll ask for a port number, um, which I think is normally 21, but again, it, I think it can vary. But with 20i, your FTP details are here. Okay, uh, so you've got your server name, your username, which is normally your domain name, and then your password. Okay, so once you've um, entered all of that information into your FTP program of choice. Um, what we can do, if I just bring up forklift here. So um, what we need to do first is navigate to our published tools and basically just find the tool that we have exported. Um, so let's just use um, did any of them. Uh, so this is basically what 3D Vista will export for you. So you've got all your fonts, library, media, skins, um, the index files, scripts, and all that sort of good stuff. Uh, so what we want to do is come to the main sort of root folder that you've exported your tool to. And remember, it's very important to make sure that you've kept all of this in lowercase with no spaces. So if you're going to use a space, use a hyphen instead. Um, and then down here, uh, this is my FTP server. Okay, so this is the main root folder. So do you remember earlier on I mentioned about the forward slash client tools? If I double click in here, this is the folder that I created and that's what creates that kind of subfolder as to say. Um, so all we need to do is basically take the example tool, click and then drag straight into that folder. Um, I won't do that because it's going to overwrite everything, which I don't want to do. Um, but it's as simple as that. That's that's how you do it. Um, again, I can't stress this enough, but things will differ between different platforms. Um, but this is the basis of uh, uploading a tour to, to an FTP server. And once you've done that, then the whole world will be able to take a look at your amazing 360 virtual tours. The only thing that goes with that that you may want to do um, is to look at an um, embed code. Uh, most clients that you work with will have someone who looks after their website. Um, so that person will be able to look into embed codes and everything um, for your clients. Uh, but if you look online for um, an embed code or contact your 360 virtual tour company, I'm sure that they'll be able to help you out with that. and. Uh, even look on forums or Facebook or something like that. Uh, but it's basically what the embed code will do is it will enable your client to embed their 360 virtual tour on their website page. So I think that's it. Well, there you have it. Um, I hope that was helpful. I hope you've learned a little bit from that on, uh, on what to do and how, you know, how to get everyone to be able to view your tours. Thanks very much for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, then please, please do. Uh, I have looked at the stats and quite a few of the people that view my channel haven't subscribed yet. Um, maybe I'll just talk too much, which I do. But um, but yeah, please, uh, please at least click the like button. And um, if you do want to subscribe, then uh, make sure to click that as well and click the notification bell to be informed when I post new videos, which I will be trying to do a lot more of soon. Uh, I've got a really exciting review video coming up very, very soon. In fact, two of them. So, um, so yeah, thanks a lot for your time and I will see you all again soon. Take care.